Hey everyone, so today we're gonna to be talking more about filters. Now I know when we did photo editing, we did talk about filters and filter gallery, but I wanna make sure that you understand how to use a couple of different ways um, to use filters on shapes. We're gonna talk about how to use the liquify filter, and then we're gonna finish up by discussing the blur gallery. First and foremost, you need to download the worksheet that's available for you, and it's gonna look like this, and it's got three pages to it, and we're gonna go through each of these so that everybody's really clear about what the expectations are and how to do these things. So I'm going to start on the filter gallery artboard first, and we're going to go through these first directions. I've written out the directions for you, and I've included some screen capture images so that you know that you're on the right way. So I'm going to start by first adding a custom shape. I'm going to come over to my toolbar and I'm going to come down to custom shape or you can hit U, shift U on your keyboard until you get to the shape that you need. I'm going to come up here and I'm going to just choose one. Now I've used this kind of blobby thing. It is completely okay for you to use whatever you're interested in in here because not all of those shapes are consistent from when I did this before. So basically you can kind of look through here and just pick out a shape that you would like to work on. So I'm just going to choose this flower and I'm going to draw a flower in my box here. If you hold down shift, you're going to get a perfect flower. Um, and I'm going to leave this here and it's going to default to whatever my properties were up here. So I'm just going to change this to a pretty color and I'm going to take the stroke off for us to manipulate this. Now, for this half tone, we're going to go into our filter gallery. I'm going to set my colors over here to look a little bit more inviting. So when I go to use my color galleries, you're going to see those colors change. So I've got it set to pink and black and that's completely fine. With the layer selected, it says shape 441. What you're going to do, yours might say shape one. What we're going to do is I'm going to go to filter and I'm going to open up my filter gallery. It's going to ask me, do I want to convert it to a smart object or rasterize? I'm going to say rasterize the shape so that I turn it into an image. So you'll see it's flattened it out and it's taken all of its color. I'm going to come down to sketch and I'm going to choose half tone pattern. Now you'll see it's kind of adjusted and it's using the two colors over here. I'm going to change my size to 10 so that you guys can see a little bit more clearly what this looks like. And then I'm going to change my contrast to 35. And you'll see that I've gotten this real fun pattern in here and I'm going to say okay. And now my shape is filled with this half tone pattern. For the next one, I'm gonna duplicate this shape, and I've told you how to do that. We're just gonna duplicate the halftone layer you just created. That's Command J on your keyboard, or you can right click and say Duplicate Layer, either way. And I'm just gonna make a copy and say okay. And I'm gonna drag this down to this box, which is where I'm gonna place my, my objects. And I'm gonna add another filter on top. So I'm gonna go back to filter, go back to filter gallery. Now, this is important because I see a lot of students do this. They come up here and they do this. They're like, that says filter gallery. But what they're doing, if you were to choose this, all it's gonna do is filter it with the last filter you did. And instead I wanna put a new one. So I have to go down to the main filter gallery to open this one up. So this time, instead of doing the filter gallery, I'm gonna to go to the pixelate option. I'm gonna to go to the pixelate option. Excuse me, oh, I'm in the wrong one. Filter, pixelate, excuse me. And we're gonna do crystallize. And I'm going to change when the box pops up, I'm going to change my cell slider to 100 because I really want you guys to be able to see how this works. And it's really cool looking. And I'm going to say, okay. And that's how you can take two different filters inside of a shape and modify them. What I'd like you to do for the next, for the three and four is I want you to kind of create a new shape of your choosing. And I want you to put at least two different filters playing with some of the filters in here. So I really want you to kind of look through and see what other choices do you have? There's mosaic, there's pointillism, there's fragment. There's a lot of different choices in here. And I really want you to kind of see what's in here and try different ones. So don't use the same filter twice. Make sure you choose for all new filters and give that a whirl, okay? All right, 
Now let's talk about the liquify filter and we're going to do the liquify filter on two different images that I've provided for you. I've given you a giraffe image and a flamingo. I'm going to do the giraffe one and then you're going to do the flamingo on your own. And I'm going to zoom in on this one just so I can get a nice clear image. And I want to make sure that I'm on my giraffe layer. Now I've included the directions for you, for you to go through this, but I'm just going to give you a kind of a, a detailed exploration of how to use this. So on this image, I'm going to go to filter and I'm going to say liquify. And when I do this, a whole new menu is going to pop up for the liquify filter. That's going to give me a lot of choices. First, I'm going to zoom in so I can really see my giraffe. And I've got over here lots of different choices. I have the forward warp, reconstruct, smooth, twirl clockwise, pucker, bloat, push left, freeze, thaw mask, face tool, and hand tool, and then my zoom in tool. Hand tool just lets you move around. Um, this has really advanced itself a lot. We didn't used to have the face tool or the freeze mask or the thaw mask. Those are brand new. For today, we're just going to focus on some of these up here, and I want to show you what each one does. For this, if you are using this push forward, it does literally what it sounds like. It's going to push the image forward. Now, with anything, you have brush size options over here. I have density options, which is going to show less density, and I also have pressure options. So sometimes I like to move my brush up, not that much up, move my brush up. There we go. Um, and you can use your brackets on your keyboard for this as well. And I like to pull my pressure down because I find with photo editing, less is more. Less is more. And if you go too far, and I'll show you what I mean by too far, too far, it's going to look photoshopped. So the, the key with this is you really want to keep your pressure a little bit lower and you want to just pull ever so slightly up little by little pulling things around. Okay. The next option I'm going to come down, I'm going to show you just some other fun ones. Twirl clockwise lets you twirl your image. Again, I've never found a lot of use for that one. Um, we've got this one, which is going to be your pucker and your bloat. To me, these kind of go hand in hand. So pucker and bloat do exactly like they sound. Pucker is going to pull everything down. And I'm going to undo because I don't, I don't want to pucker him too much. And then bloat does the opposite. It's going to make everything kind of swell. So you can use this for lots of different reasons. You see this used a lot in the modeling world, unfortunately, um, to adjust things. Um, and then this one lets me push left or I can kind of pull things to the right. Um, but with photo editing, oh, I've that's push left. With photo editing, you want to really be careful. Freeze mask lets me kind of freeze an area that doesn't get messed up so that when I come in here and adjust, see how my head doesn't get changed at all. And then if I want to unfreeze, I can just erase that part that I don't, that I now maybe want to manipulate. We don't really have a face in this one to play with, but we can play with that one at another time. Um, smooth tool lets me kind of smooth out some rough edges if I've kind of gone too far. And a, literally, you can kind of sit here, guys, and just kind of play with these. Um, the reconstruct, sometimes if I get my pixels off, it'll kind of start fixing stuff and start moving stuff around, which is kind of nice. For this activity, what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to make our giraffe's neck longer and move him without it looking like you have adjusted him. So that's where I need you to come in and just kind of tweak him. I want you to play with him and I want you to kind of pull him up and slowly kind of morph. You can see what I'm doing. I'm slowly morphing him so that I'm pulling him up ever so slightly. Because again, the key is you don't want it to look photoshopped. You don't want it to look photoshopped. So when you're all said and done, you just want to make it so he's just a little different without adjusting and ruining, ooh, I'm losing my place, ruining the look of him. So maybe you could come in and change the tail. You can maybe make the neck a little longer. So you're just going to kind of play with this, practicing this technique, kind of figuring out how to do it. But watch, you know, your background because you don't want to accidentally pull out the clouds too much and ruin things. All right, when you're all done, you're just gonna say okay, and it's gonna finalize, and you'll have 
your liquefied giraffe. When you're done with that, you're gonna do your flamingo as well. You can make your flamingo shorter or taller, it's up to you. The last thing we're gonna talk about is the blur gallery. I have the directions here for you with the different types of blur and we're gonna work on the truck and then you're gonna do the children on your own. So I'm gonna make sure that I have my truck layer or layer two selected. And this is going to allow me to create different types of blurs. And we're gonna kind of talk through these. So first and foremost, I'm gonna to go to filter and I'm gonna to go to blur gallery and I have some choices and I'm just gonna pull up the field blur for us to kind of manipulate and play with. It's gonna pull up this over here if you can see where I'm at. And it's going to start kind of showing me how this works. And one of the things that I can do is I can decide on different subjects, different places. I can decide on what's called the focal point, okay? And then you can choose different options. So right now field blur is selected, but I could change this to iris blur and make the iris the center place of where I want that blur to be. And I can adjust the light and the broca color, the bokeh color, excuse me, and kind of sit here and, and adjust things. Now, please understand that the blur is a large kind of entity and it's going to take a little time. So as it's saying it's updating, just kind of be prepared that it may take a few minutes to do that. Sometimes I need to cancel and go back in and that's completely okay. So I'm gonna go back, blur gallery. This time I'm gonna do the iris blur just so everybody can kind of see the way this one works. And this is where the iris blur is. So you can see that it's defaulted here, over here, and I'm gonna pull it over here so that it kind of goes in the right place. And then I can kind of adjust this and pull it down and adjust. Now it's doing it kind of funky because it's the big worksheet and I just want to do it on just the truck. So I've got this kind of radial thing and I've got these handles that I can adjust and I can pull and I can decide how much blur is going outside or how little blur and I can decide on how much is blurred out versus how little is blurred out, and I can kind of adjust this over here. I can also come over and change the light, how much light we see, how much color we see in the blurred section. So if you turn it all the way up, you're gonna see the color kind of shifts. Um, it's very subtle, which is good. And you can see right here, see how the light is changing inside what's being left. You also can come in here and you can look at, there's different options for noise and you can kind of change some of these settings and kind of play with them until you get a look like you want. And when you're done, you just say, okay. And it's put a blurred effect on your truck. Again, it's going to go through the progress. Don't be afraid if this happens. It just might take a few minutes and that's okay. For this activity, you are going to blur the truck in one way. And then I'd like you to choose a different way to blur the children. It's completely up to you which me mechanism you're going to use, which technique you're going to use, but just kind of go through and play with these different effects and the different tools in order to really kind of get down what it is you're interested in doing. But the directions are right here for you. That's your blurs gallery along with your liquify and your filters gallery. When you're all done, if you just want to stop, save this last name, first name, period, and we're going to call it filters and we're going to turn it in. Okay. Hope you enjoyed the lesson. Thanks.